Since independence, Russia has remained a steadfast and loyal friend to India. Realizing India's potential early on, Russia and its leaders have always held India and its people in high regard, and a natural, mutually beneficial relationship has endured through the decades. Recently, Delhi-Moscow ties have been subjected to unwarranted media glare and trial since the war broke out between Russia and the Ukraine. Delhi has always maintained a pro-peace, pro-people position. Despite this, many have raised questions over India's import of Russian oil, and others have asked India to toe the line of the United States and the Western world. India and Russia share a unique relationship, however, one that cannot and should not be solely dictated by other countries who are not part of this dynamic. Indian and Russian diplomatic ties have been time-tested and are economically symbiotic. The relationship provides advantages to both countries. And New Delhi will never break ties with an old friend who has stood by India's people. India is the world's fifth largest economy and is projected to overtake Japan and Germany to become a top three world economy. India's economic policies have been particularly fruitful in the last few years and they are projected to continue driving the economy upwards in years to come. A surge in pent-up demand in a reopened world will further boost India's economic growth rate. While many countries throughout the world are bearing the brunt of a high inflation-driven downturn, India's economy continues to blossom. India's pro-peace, pro-dialogue approach to world affairs is the one that makes sense for her economy and her people. So why should India copy the West's Russian condemnation and isolation? A rational approach for an industrializing India would be to avoid any unyielding positions that may affect her growth momentum. Be it any tech hiccup, a trade barrier, or a diplomatic obstacle, India would be wise to avoid conflicts. We do take side of the reason. The reason is that there should be no war, that there should be peace, that the UN Charter should be followed. So those are the kind of things that dialogue and diplomacy should be given preference. And when we say so, we are not merely uh, articulating them as a matter of principle. Indian foreign policy is determined by the interests of her own people and not by what others desire or try to dictate. India has refrained from picking sides whenever an attempt has been made to polarize the world by any individual force or any grouping. Modi's government feels no pressure. ये fear आपके दिमाग में होगा मेरे दिमाग में तो नहीं है मेरे को लगता है मेरी from my disposition मेरे को कोई fear है a look back on history makes it evident that India has always been a neutral and pro-peace country. From being a co-founder of the Non-Aligned Movement in 1961 to today's unambiguous position of dialogue and diplomacy, India has, time and time again, said that she wants peace and she will always promote and pursue peace. India's realist leadership is cognizant of the fact that it is her sustained economic efforts that will catapult her from a low-income country to a middle-income country. It is the result of this philosophy, and not one of blindly choosing sides, that India's real GDP, according to the World Bank, will register a 6.9% growth in the 2022-2023 to financial year. New Delhi has also made it clear that she will always prioritize her people over politics. Her oil import from Russia is singularly based on low price oil availability from Russia. This should not be interpreted in any other way. For us, Russia has been a, a steady and time-tested partner. And as I said, uh, any, any objective evaluation of our relationship over many decades would confirm that it has actually served both our countries uh, 
very, very well. It is our fundamental obligation to ensure that the Indian consumer has the best possible access uh, on the most advantageous terms to international markets. Over the years, India has had economic, military, and diplomatic needs, which Russia has always responded to considerately. Whether it was 1971, when Western powers colluded with the rogue military establishment of Pakistan, or when India's gasoline-driven economy needed low-priced oil to keep its economy on track, Moscow has been a tried and tested partner to Delhi. Their time-tested friendship, coupled with an ever-expanding camaraderie, provides economic and cultural benefits to both. The Western world, and their media in particular, needs to understand the nuances of the India-Russia bilateral relationship, one that thrives on cooperation and not on conspiracies. There are many who say that India-Russia relations are criticized because India is emerging as an economic superpower and diplomatic heavyweight. India's first priority has always been looking after her citizens and their interests. India's pro-peace, pro-people, and pro-diplomacy approach is the one that will continue to guide brand India towards new heights, economically and geopolitically. Turmeric, coriander, garam masala, black pepper, and red chili. These spices, among many, many others, play a vital role in Indian cuisine, adding unique flavors and taste to food and drink. The traditional spice box, known as a masala daba, is one of the necessities in an Indian kitchen. A masala daba typically comprises several small metal cups, with each containing a particular spice. Indian spices are used in a variety of products, such as sauces, bakery goods, frozen foods, beverages, dressings, packaged foods, and many more throughout the whole world. About 75 of the 109 varieties of spices listed by the International Organization for Standardization are produced in India, a country famous for its spices. Uh, I think uh, we will be touching an annual uh, growth between 10 to 12 percent very soon and uh, the Indian government has, uh, they have a target to touch about 19.5 percent uh, annual export sales. Uh, so we can, you know, be out there in the global market uh, as, as a, you know, a Make in India brand. In India, the production of different spices has increased significantly over the past few years. According to a report by the Government Trust India Brand Equity Foundation, 10.88 million tons of spices were produced in 2021 to 2022. Many of these spices are exported from the country to numerous nations worldwide. India exported spices and spice-related products to 180 countries during 2020 to 2021. China, the USA, Bangladesh, Thailand, UAE, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, the UK, Indonesia, and Germany were top destinations for Indian spices. And more than 70% of all export revenue in 2020 to 2021 came from these markets only. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, demand for Indian spices has increased even more due to their immunity-boosting effects. The export of spices registered an all-time high in volume and value during 2020 to 2021, growing by 17% in U.S. value terms and 30% overall. Their continually increasing demand is spiking the Indian spice market. बहुत अच्छा परफॉर्म कर रहा है हमारे मसाले दुनिया भर के देशों में जा रहे हैं स्पेशली अमेरिका में बहुत मसाले जा रहे हैं हमारे मसालों की क्वालिटी इतनी बढ़िया है कि ज्यादातर देशों में उनका इंपोर्ट है 
The enormous growth of the Indian spice market has created a flurry of business opportunities for those seeking high returns on small investments. Stepping up their marketing initiatives, the leading spice producers are also coming up with innovative products. With the heavy investment in social media platforms, the market players are engaging with customers to comprehend their demands and tastes. Industry experts believe that India has maintained the appeal of its spices and will remain the leading producer for several years.